live today in a time of revolution. In 1995, PCs outsold TVs. A number of email messages surpassed that of the US mail. And with exponential increases in internet growth, our bark data traffic actually exceeded voice traffic. The information age is rapidly changing the way we think, the way we work and play, and the way we communicate. Yet, with all the techno-social change, there remains one requisite to success that will carry over into the 21st century, and that is customer service. Now, I've always found that the best way to understand the customer's perspective is to relate it to our own experiences as a customer. The customer may not always voice his opinions openly to us, but we can be sure he has very definite feelings about the service we deliver to him. So here, for example, is the type of situation one might relate to. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Wait a minute, please. Oh. Right. Oh. How can I help you, sir? Uh, yes, well, I, I purchased this um, clock radio here the other week, and I'm afraid there's a bit of a problem with it. Oh, I wish I could help you, sir. It is beyond the scope of my responsibility. Uh, I'll get the assistant manager for you. Ah, yes, thank you. I'm the assistant manager. How can I help you, sir? Uh, um, yes, yes. I, I purchased this clock radio here uh, the other week, and I'm having a bit of a problem with it. Uh, what type of problem, sir? Uh, well, for one thing, it doesn't work. Oh, I see. Well, let's just plug it in, shall we? <clears throat> oh, sounds like it works to me. Uh, yes, but you see, there's a... Here. Dead people listen to this type of music, don't they? Please, just one moment. If you listen carefully. Sounds all right to me, sir. No, no, shh, shh. Listen. There. What? We're there. Don't you hear that? Oh, yeah, I heard that. Oh, it's nothing, really. Nothing to worry about, sir. Well, well how shall I put this? You see, I prefer to listen on my radio to music without the noise. Do you think that's possible? Well, why blame it on the radio, sir? Probably the station. I don't think that the station would be broadcasting that just in order to aggravate me. Nah, sir, of course not. Uh, right. It's part of the music. Um, that's Mozart's Symphony in G minor. It's a piece of music I really know quite well. And I can assure you that Mozart never put in that noise into the piece of music. Oh, it replaces the tuba. But there aren't any tubas. I see. Well, it's very unlikely, sir, that this machine here would have a defect. But you I see, don't... we've redesigned the entire new line. Oh. Well, we have cut corners to save you, the customer, a bit of money. But... but what about this, eh? Do you know what this is? 100% impact-resistant plastic. Oh, really? Watch this. Oh, nonsense, sir. Uh, not at look, all. Look, you know, a bit of professional repair work here. It's very simple, sir. Very simple. Bit on the right, bit on the left. Good as new. I'll write you up a repair report. You're a happy customer. Happy customer? Good as new? <laughs> repair report? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> the arrogance of the man. You know, if you showed a bit of integrity and offered your customers a quality product, <laughs> Maybe they come back to you again. Did you say something? Me? No, absolutely. This is funny. I swore I heard something. Look, do you think it might be possible for me to take advantage of my money back guarantee? Oh, I'm afraid, sir, the manager's the only man that can authorize that, sir. Well, might I speak to him then? I'll see what I can do, sir.
Yes, I'm the manager. How can I help you, sir? Well, um, I, I bought this clock radio here the other week, and uh, I've been having problems with it. Well, along the short of it is that I'd rather like to take advantage of my money-back guarantee. What money-back guarantee is that, sir? Oh, the one on your sales contract, the one that says here, money-back guarantee. Oh, if I can just draw your attention to the fine print, sir, in the contract. It does say here somewhere in the fine print, under the contractual obligations, Ah, yes, here we are. Money-back guarantee. Oh, exactly. You see. If the unit explodes on the top deck of the Lusitania at Lusitania. noon on a Saturday. Look, the Lusitania was sunk in 1915 by a German submarine. Oh, yes, I know. Terrible, really. Not very good news for you either, I'm afraid, sir. Look, perhaps I could exchange it? For what? Well, one that works. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, I see. So you're not happy with the model you purchased, then? No, not really. No. Right. Where is it? What? Well, there. There, there, on the table. Now, that? Look, you can't expect me to exchange this for a new clock radio. I mean, look at the condition it's in. It's been used. Yes, but it was fired. Put your manager. What about your slogan? What slogan, sir? The slogan in the news newspaper here. Look, uh, in your advertisement. <laughs> Service is our best product. You believe everything you read? That does it. That does it, you stingy layabout. Gouging after every last dime, aren't you? You don't care about giving value. No, no. All you care about is getting your grubby little hands on the money to hell with a customer. Because you aren't going to see him again, are you? Well, surprise. You're not going to see me again because I'm taking my business to your competitor. You, you, Did you say mm. something? I didn't hear you. I know. I know. More's the pity. More's the pity. And so it goes. But that's what I like about being the customer. I always have the last word about the future of the companies that extend me service. Now, if I'm unhappy with the price, the quality, or the service I receive, I pass that on to another customer. I, in turn, pass the word to yet another customer. And I to another in a process we call word of mouth, which is how reputations are made and how business plans succeed or fail. So you see, we really do have the last word. Has anyone had lunch yet? No, I'm famished. So am I. Give us.